Hello artists, how are you today? It's Stephanie Ani once again coming to you from the banks of the Trinity River here near Willow Creek, California. Oz and I welcome you to the studio. Well, um, in this video you'll see me really working on trying to create depth in here. So, um, it's not finished yet, but uh, I think I painted on it for hour and a half, two hours. So I'm just going to speed you up through the process. Um, bluer tones in back, more blurry, smaller, and then coming up to our warmer tones. Now what I need to do is actually make this tree taller so that I can really push that perspective and maybe even put in a trunk in here so that it really has the feeling not really positive. Actually, this side is looking pretty darn good as far as creating the depth. Could use a little more bluer, blacker tones back in here. Uh, maybe purpley tones. I'm, seeing, I'm looking in the screen. Sometimes it's easier to see it in the screen than it is to see it looking directly at it. Uh, this obviously has issues right there. So, um, yeah, just working on the painting. Um, you know, you have to take it step by step and bit by bit and adjust. And these, these pieces here still are not completed. So as you can see, they've got a lot of depth to them, a lot of great detail. Mm -hmm. And um, we're gonna work on doing even more detail with that. Okay, well, here's your video. Like I said, I'm just gonna fast forward you through it. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll do voiceover on it or not. It just depends. Um, or if you'll just get to listen to some music. So um, remember those basic rules that I just said, I'm trying to get it um, bluer tones, cooler tones to really push that depth, lower contrast, um, kind of fuzzier, you know, the more detail, the closer you get to it. Okay, well, here you go, guys. I hope you have a great day. Oh, I need to do a shout out to the Patreons, of course. Thank you so much for being uh, here with me through this and for pledging your support to the channel. I really, truly, absolutely do appreciate it. Uh, things are gonna be a little bit erratic right now. Um, I um, have picked up a, a steady shift, but then I also just got called in from um, another one of my coworkers. She needed a couple days off, so I'm gonna take over her shift for this week too. So, um, all in all, it's, um, I never know when I'm working, <laughs> but, um, you know, I'm not going to pass it up either. So, and I'm having fun at my job. So, so that's cool. It does kind of put a damper on the art though. All right, everybody. I hope you have a great day. And, uh, of course we will chat soon. Love you bunches. Mm -hmm. artists. Well, I thought I'd do a quick voiceover so that you guys can get an idea of the thought process behind what I'm doing. This section of painting did take me about an hour and a half. This is real time and we're going to speed up to triple time here in just a second. But I did want you to recognize that it takes a long time to mix the right color. It takes a long time to um, make it be exactly what you want it to be. So it's not a fast process and sometimes you guys can get um, get to feeling like you're not doing it right or that you're too slow at it. You know, good painting takes time. That's just part of the process. Okay, so let's talk about colors real quick that I use on my palette. I use titanium white because it is a less transparent color. It's a very true white. Um, I then have CAD Yellow Light and CAD Yellow Deep. 
I have yellow oxide, burnt sienna, and then I think I also have the red oxide on there. There is one more. Maybe that's a burnt umber color. Just trying to get some good ground colors in there. Then you have the um, paroli red and the quinacrinone magenta. Uh, paroli red is that really beautiful red. You could use um, cad yellow, or I'm sorry, cad red. Or, and then alizarin crimson also works really well for the um, quinacrinone magenta. So you don't have to use the exact same palette that I do. The greens that I use, sap green, hooker's green, viridian green, or a phalo green. Um, then my blues, uh, then we go from cobalt turquoise and cobalt teal to cerulean blue, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, prussian blue, and phalo blue. I do like to use a lot of different blues. Um, as we saw with our 30 times 3, that the more that some blues give you one color and some blues give you another. So, um, and then I also like Payne's gray and ivory black. I don't use a ton of black because I generally mix my um, colors for my black. It makes for a much more vibrant um, black tone. So what am I doing here? I am trying to bring brighter, intense colors to the foreground and then I'm trying to establish perspective. And so it's a very short amount of space that you have in there to push the background to the back and to bring that foreground forward. So around the train, there is going to be space where the tracks are between the vegetation. So I know that what I'll really want to do is put bluer tones and purpley tones, cool tones, um, kind of grayed, muted shades in that background. And then I need to bring those shadow colors to be more vibrant as they come to the foreground. So a lot of this is just trying to figure out how to make the train look like it's sitting there. Now on the caboose side, I have the train tracks in there, which worked great and it really gives a great guideline to work around. On the engine side, putting those train tracks in there just was not working um, when I was building that engine. So um, I'll, I'll, it, it is possible that train tracks will get put in on that engine side just because I think they look really good on the caboose side. So I've been sitting and looking at this book now for probably two months since I've picked it up, uh, maybe even longer. And you know, what you have to do is you have to bring vibrant colors forward and more muted colors backwards. So I've been studying it and I've been looking at it. It's like, okay, how do I make this look right? You know, more detail up front. Um, uh, more variance in color. So that yellow is a very bright yellow next to that bright darker green. That will bring that color to the foreground or that tree to the foreground versus those muted um, sage colors that are in the back. And I think those end up getting changed too. And those of you that have watched me know that I generally do about three layers on a painting. I'll start with a base layer and then um, I'll start getting into a little bit more detail, which would be this stage. And then I come back and I do the final details, which will be coming up in the next video. Um, here I'm trying to establish some highlights, trying to, you know, that particular trunk there was really close to the edge. So trains generally have you know, what, a couple feet at least um, in between uh, the tracks and the vegetation and kind of have a little hill bank, um, depending on where you're at, of course. And then this is a fictional place, so I'm not looking at an actual image. If you have an actual image that you're trying to reproduce, you'll generally have a much easier time instead of just making up something out of your head. 
So if you have photographs or if you go online and get some reference photos, your life's going to truly be much easier. I couldn't really find um, reference photos for what I wanted. Now, my, uh, my dad was very much so into model trains, so this um, cover and this project really does have a lot of additional meaning for me. You know, I, I love the fact that I'm making something that I know that he would have really enjoyed. And it's been a lot of fun constructing the train. And if you go to the Circus Book playlist, you can watch both the engine and the caboose being made. Now see here what I'm doing is I'm really pushing those blue gray tones in the background. Still trying to kind of do a leaf shape. I'm not completely covering anything. I'm dabbing the paint. Um, because you want to try to keep some variance in there and some interest in there. Um, and we're adding darks and lights and darks and lights and blues and warms. Kind of going from both background to forefront. And part of doing that is really to um, get a... Um, it's really hard to finish one section. Um, well... It, it's color adjusting. You know, it, it, I'm always adjusting the color. I'm always adjusting the tone. Um, until it, it gets to feeling like it's right. So if you look there, now it's really starting to get the feeling of having those trees being in the foreground, having the sunlight. Um, you know, I've established my sun already a long time ago off of that caboose. So you see where that brighter, lighter blue is? That's where the sun is hitting that caboose and also the lighter green on the engine. Um, you know, if you take something that's kind of a flat black color, as a steam engine is, the highlight is kind of a army green or a blue green color. And of course, that all depends on what's next to it and what the reflections are and all of that. So, again, that's where a reference photo comes in really handy. But try to make sure that your um, light source is established at the same place on both sides or you're gonna have something that looks really bizarre so here I'm just trying to go in and do more definition in the trees the closer the trees the more definition they'll have the more you can see the shadows behind them the more you know that's just gonna continue to give you more depth all the time And I'm trying to, you know, create those branches that are catching the top light. And then you've got to really push the darks. You've got to push the highlights. You've got to push the darks. This is why acrylic paint works well for me. This is my style of painting. I, you know, there's definitely many other styles of painting. But when you're doing something like this technique with oil paints, um, it can get muddy really quickly because I building up colors. So I've just always used acrylic paints, even in art school. They weren't a fan of it, but it's just like, no, that's my, that's my medium. So, all right. I like what's happening here. I think this is pretty cool. Now, how you set up your palette is completely up to you. I have a tendency to go from warm to cools. Warms on one side, cools on the other. And um, you need at least, um, you know, some of each. Uh, I rarely take just a very mm, true color. I mean, all my colors are mixed is what I want to say. Um, some people take color right out of a tube. And, um, you know, I just don't. It's not my thing. However, if I were to get more paint colors, that would probably change. So what I'm doing here is I'm putting in a lighter blue, and that's to create the background highlights. So even if something's in the background, it has to have highlights and lowlights. 
So they're going to be bluer tones. And in our shadows, even in the foreground, our shadows have highlights and low lights. Oh, look at that. See? So you can still see, you know, how how far I have still to move um, to get to that very, very brightest um, color. That's a really intense color. So I'm using it here in the very foreground trees. And yes, I'm making dabs to indicate the leaves. Absolutely. Because there are a lot of, you know, it takes a while. I'm not going to lie to you guys. It does take a while to get all that detail in there. But it's worth it in the end. And, um, you know, these will probably all get adjusted. Now, you see right there how I got that close to that um, train on that side? That's got to go darker. That's got to go bluer. Unless I have just this one random branch coming out, which is probably what I was trying to create. But, uh, yeah, that's probably not going to stay there, I would guess. And I do want to make those trees that are in the foreground there that I'm working, I want to make those go up off the page um, to really get the feeling that they are the closest trees. Put them into a little bit better scale. They should be the tallest, and the ones in the background should be much shorter. Uh, they should have the most detail, the most contrast, the warmest colors, and the coolest colors. Um, see there, I'm kind of adjusting that color. It just takes time, you know, um, to get it to look the way that you want it to look. And it's not quite perfect yet, you know. That's part of, um, you know, working on a video in front of you guys is that, you know, I don't always get it on the first try. Um, if you go back and look at the other videos, these, this trees, this foreground has taken a lot of time. And uh, it's gone through a lot of evolution. It's probably been more than three or four layers. <clears throat> it's probably been five, six, ten layers of paint. I'm not really sure. Uh, you know, I'm not going to stop until it feels the way that I want it to feel, though. So here, putting in some highlights, putting in some darks, um, trying still to at, uh, establish that ground, a little bank feeling. Uh, pushing that back into the back, but having it come forward. Smaller, you need to have little smaller dabs instead of larger dabs of paint. Um, a little bit more blurry. See, that yellow is almost the same yellow as what's you know in the foreground trees, so it started to come forward. So then I started to add a bit more blue. Now you need to have sunlight shown there, but um, the trees on the other side of the caboose are not as close as the trees that are right there in the center. So you have to have to work around that. I hope this is making sense. I'm just kind of um, following along with my procedure here. Um, And when I'm working on this, I don't, you know, say, oh, well, you're just going to do this corner and then you're going to do that corner. I work the whole painting all the time. So here what I'm doing is I'm really establishing that bank. And I'm really happy with how that bank ended up turning out on that side, on the caboose side. Um, let's see here. I'm really going to push it a little bit there. Just working on uh, trying to establish that perspective as much as I possibly can, that depth of field. It's a process. It's definitely a process. And, uh, you know, the, see, here's that's where that gets all messed up right there. I was trying to establish that bank, and um, I need to push some darks around that. I need to push more darks around it. I think that's what's going on. I'm trying to really get that look again that the other side has. 
so it's not always easy. You know, one side works and the other side doesn't work. And you look at it, it's like, oh, I can't get it. I can't get it right. It's closer there. I think I cover it up again because, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm really trying. But there you see those trees now are... The trees are off from one side to the next, so I have to figure out how to make it all blend together, and even though they're not exactly like on the same point in the horizon. The caboose is further away, and the engine is coming towards us, so you know, making those trees look correct um, and making the perspective right. It's um, it's a process. Not gonna lie. But it's close. It's very close. You know, now I feel like I can tackle it. Um, I need to bring in some more color into the sky. Like I said, I need to make those foreground trees a little bit taller. Um, maybe even bring those trees just a little bit more up. Probably not, actually. They're about the right size. Trying to figure out how to make that thing sit in the back. Like it's coming forward at us. Anyways, this has been um, a very challenging book. I'm looking forward to finishing it up. I have a lot of um, spots that I want to do a little bit more work to that... Um, you know, you know what this needs? It needs some more red in the foreground. And, you know, like, how red? Like, right where my paintbrush is at right there. It's like, how do I get some red in there? Some more higher contrast of color. Um, hmm. Right now I'm kind of using that navy blue. So, maybe a contrast in blues. And I'm, I'm not quite sure what it's going to take. And it's possible when I get that um, the trees adjusted that that will be all it needs. So yeah, when I get back to this uh, next week, what I'll do is I'll go back over the sky and uh, work on that some more after, you know, you don't have to necessarily work on the sky separate. You work on the sky and the, the branches at the same time. You'll see how I do that. Just like I'm working the shadows here and and the highlights. You have to you have to work it all together. And you know when you're really trying to show depth and you only have like an inch square space to do it, like right underneath those lights right there, that's like an inch square that I'm trying to show, you know, a lot of depth with. And that's difficult and that takes practice and mastery. And I'm out of practice with uh, painting. I'm getting better all the time. I've been doing a lot of painting here lately. So um, that's very helpful. But, you know, back when I was in college and I was painting, um, you know, for a couple of years straight, it was much easier to get this done. And then also when you have instructors that you're talking to and your instructor, instructors are pointing out spots where you can just do a little bit of an adjustment and you can create more depth, that's very helpful to have a second set of eyes on things. And, you know, I can sit back and look at something after a while and, uh, you know, I can feel if it feels right or not and I'll get it, you know, eventually I'll get it. But See, it almost feels like it needs to be two separate trees. 
Siri just turned on for no reason. Um, because right there where the engine is at, that's actually feeling pretty good right now. But it's when it comes around that book binding that it's not quite right. So. Okay, well, um, I think we're probably getting fairly close. We might not be. You know, it's kind of hard to continually chat for a couple hours. Or a couple hours. Too funny. Um, you know, for 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Um, you know, I'm just working through the process. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoy it. Okay. Well, thank you, all of you amazing Patreons, for your support. You guys are incredible. If you have any questions about Patreon, please uh, check out the link below and um, see all the benefits. You do get a piece of small art when you join, so um, you get a lot of benefits right off the bat. All of the circus images are on Patreon, so just to let you guys know, every single image that I've used in this book and hundreds of images more are on Patreon. In fact, those are, I think, around um, a lot of those uh, images will be from January. So if you do want those great images, you just need to uh, pledge your support over on Patreon, and I would really, truly appreciate it. Um, as an artist, this is my main source of income, so... Um, you know, I, I do need your support if you can swing it. If you can't, I truly do get it. I understand. So, anyways, enough talk about that. Still just working on that. Trying to get those blues in the background. The warmer colors in front. Darker to... Yeah, it's getting closer, but you want it to look like dirt. And then dirt is a hard color. Dirt is a hard color because it can be really flat, it can be too warm, it needs to be a cool dirt color, and what color is cold dirt? Uh, kind of a grayish tone, but then grays are flat, and then you try to add blue, and um, yeah, it's just adjusting, 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 adjusting all the time. Getting closer. It's kind of fun to watch this process because then I can see here what I need to change when I get back to the book. So many cool projects coming up, guys. I'm very excited about um, the books I have coming up. We are going to be um, making a new book. And, uh, and then for our replacement of the Creating Your First Altered book, we've got a really fun project, too. All right, guys, we are getting to the end of this video. So I hope you all have a great day. I hope you stay safe. And, um, you know, if you get a chance, check out Patreon. And I truly do appreciate you being here with me very, very much. All right. Have a great day. Bye-bye.